So how does currency, or money, work? Where does it get its value from? Many argue that a currency only has value if it's convertible into gold or something else. A convertible currency is said to be backed by something. The surprising thing for a lot of people is that most major currencies like the dollar, euro, and yen aren't backed by anything. In fact, the average currency has only a 27-year life before it gets replaced by a new currency. We're just used to the big, long-term survivors like the dollar, yen, and the British pound. Currency is just pieces of metal, paper, and electronic entries in a bank account. This leaves us with a big question. So where does currency get its value from? The surprising answer is us. Anyone who believes in a currency creates the value for that currency. Now that sounds a little complicated, but let me explain. Currency, or money, works a little like a language. The more people who agree to and understand a language, the more value that that specific language or form of communication has. So let's use a technology example for simplicity. Technology talks to other technology using language protocols. Fax machines used a protocol to talk to each other. VHS and beta were recording protocols. Your computer probably uses TCPIP, the internet protocol, to connect with other computers on the internet network. The more users of a protocol or language, the more value that that protocol can support. If only two people or users had fax machines, cell phones, or internet devices talking in TCPIP, the protocols wouldn't have much value. There'd be a limited number of people to communicate with. As more users link up using a specific protocol, more value gets created or supported by that protocol. These links of acceptors form a network. Now here's where it gets interesting. Users of a currency have all effectively agreed to a protocol for value representation. Some users speak to each other in dollars, yen, or euros. The more people using a protocol, the more value that the network of users creates for the protocol. So currency is really just a social protocol. Gold, yen, dollars, euros, and bitcoin are all social protocols using different physical and electronic means to link up users into networks that enable value exchange. Now here's the cool thing. We can look at any protocol and calculate both the total network circulating value and the value created per user or for each node on the network using that protocol. With a little bit of thinking, you'll realize that gold, yen, dollars, and euros, and bitcoin have no intrinsic value. They are all social protocols, and they merely represent a way of supporting value flow between individuals. So here's a table that shows the value per user for a few of the more common socioeconomic protocols. Now, knowing the magic of social protocols, we can create new protocols to incentivize good things because the value that emerges from a protocol is something economists call an externality. And that positive externality can be used in good ways. SolarCoin is a new protocol. It's built on top of Bitcoin technology. And SolarCoin links solar energy production and people. Anyone who produces one megawatt hour of solar energy receives one SolarCoin. Over time, those producers effectively form a network of solar coin participants. Anyone can join the network, but only producers are entitled to free solar coin at the rate of one megawatt hour per solar coin. The Solar Coin Foundation is building a network of one million producers of solar energy. This is done by giving them free solar coins in exchange for verified proof of solar energy production. This works out to about one out of every six of the current producers in the world. This solar coin network of people will create about $800 million to $1 billion in value for renewable energy producers globally. Created using Powtoon.